Flynn bombshell cast down on Mueller's prosecutor's compliance with court orders. And the court order we're talking about is called Brady material. That is information you're required to disclose that would show the innocence or cast doubt on the defense, the prosecution's case. Failure to disclose a sculpatory material is a serious offense and warrants voiding the verdict against the defendant. And it also, in this particular case, suggests that serious charges ought to be brought against the offending parties for, your, for their failure to comply with the Brady, Brady rule. In the Flynn case, the obligation has even greater weight because Brandon Van Grack, a Justice Department prosecutor, a former member of special counsel Robert Mueller's team, was under a court order to produce such evidence, and apparently he failed to do so. We want the documents. We want that 302 that was changed. And we want to talk to the agents who were there when they interviewed Mike Flynn and why they changed that 302. So give us the documents. Let us talk to Mr. Pienka, the guy who was in the room with Peter Strzok when they interviewed Mike Flynn. That's what we want to see. We gave him till May 18th. Let's hope he gives us that information. What's still missing in all of this are the original 302s, the FBI notes. Those mysteriously haven't been produced. Here's what General Flynn's lawyer, Sidney Powell, had to say about that. We still don't have the original 302. We know there's another draft from the Strzok page text messages. And from Covington, we're still trying to get Eric Holder and Michael Chertoff's emails, phone records, and possible text messages among the Covington lawyers themselves discussing General Flynn and also any communications between Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch or Sally Yates about the Flynn matter. We also have on May 4th yesterday a letter from James Jim Jordan. What does that mean, Than What is he saying? If a field office communication shutting down a case was not deemed exculpatory information that should be turned over, then what else might be out there that wasn't turned over? That's what Jim Jordan, the ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, wants to know. He and Mike Johnson, who is the ranking member of the subcommittee on the Constitution, uh, wrote a letter to Director Ray, and to say it was direct, Jay, is an understatement. They run through a litany of the timeline that you just talked about, all of the missteps of the FBI. They also want to know if this went beyond the FBI if it went to the Oval Office to the President of the United States. And Jay, secondly, they ask for our interviews with two people who we've discussed at length on this broadcast, especially the first one. The first one is Bill Priestap, who was the Director of Counterintelligence, had to sign off on the opening of these investigations. Uh, that it's, it's shocking to me, Jay, that that interview has not yet happened. They want it to happen now. And the second one is FBI agent Joe Pentka. Who's that, Jay? That's the other agent that went over to the White House with Peter Strzok to interview General Flynn. Can you imagine that agent still has not been interviewed by the United States Congress? I look at this, Harry, and I say to myself, where was Bob Mueller in this investigation? And the irregular, I could list the irregularities, but we only get an hour of airtime, so I can't do that. So one of the big questions was whether or not Bob Mueller was, while he was special counsel, actually awake. Because if he was awake and competent, he should have prevented much of this misconduct. The court should vacate the plea, vacate the conviction, and the United States attorney at the direction of his boss, the attorney general, should dismiss the case. Yep. In addition, I would point out Adam Schiff was aware, at least to some extent, of the depth of the misconduct, and he is currently, I believe, sitting on uh, testimony that he, he will not release. To release. Nope. So, so if you put all of this together, the Obama administration, the FBI, former officials of the Justice Department current officials of the Justice Department, including, for instance, Bruce Orr, they all have a stake in continuing to hide information from the courts and from the American people. Why is Jim Jordan now pursuing this information? And I think it gets to a very specific point. He wants to know, and we should all want to know, who had this inter- this information in the intervening period and did not provide it? If a government official 
had them and did not turn them over. That is in the direct interest of the American people. And let me tell you two people who I know had them. The FBI had them, yep. Director Comey, Andrew McCabe, Peter Strzok, and guess who else? The special counsel, because these notes, they're stamped with SCO. They are the special, special counsel's, counsel's documents. Special counsel's so, Jake, office. Why were they not in the public over these last, what, two years? I'll tell you why. They didn't want any of this information out. Do you realize they were still conducting an investigation of the president of the United States on Russia collusion well after this? When they knew it was false. When they were trying to interview the president, I said it over and over again. Perjury trap. 